Hello and welcome to another episode of Craven Some Raven. I don't know what that accent was. It kind of started out Russian, ended up a little Scottish at the end there. But it doesn't matter because in today's episode, we're kings of the north, baby. Hodor held. We've defended the wall. The dragon has been slayed. The night king is dead. But we're still on top, baby. The ravens, number one in the AFC North. But we got some contenders gunning for us. We got the Browns. We got the Steelers. And we got the Bengals. One tiger, a color, and a material. Can they take down a bird? I don't know. You know, I haven't... I've... I follow football, so I know some of the additions, subtractions from each team off the top of my head, but I want to do a deep dive and kind of an instant reaction because I haven't really looked into what these teams have done per se, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and take a gander and see, do, do we have to be nervous? Maybe I'll review like, what I think they're going to they're gonna be, maybe, I don't know, what, what their uh, record's going to be, I don't know, we'll... Uh, well, take a look. I, I, I don't have an outline for this episode, or really like any episode. Any episode I do is really just me off the cuff, you know, just just talking. I, I haven't recorded one in a while, so I don't know if I said this, but I'm feeling rusty, feeling like a rusty trombone over here. So I got to get back into things, really talk some Ravens, get hyped, get ready, because the wall's coming down. Got to defend that north. Um... Before I, get, before I get into that, I have a pretty big sponsor, okay? A car company, in fact. So pay me a lot of money for this. So, this episode is brought to you by Kia Motors. The kung fu of car buying. They put the Kia in Kia. So kick away your neighbors and get on down to the dealership and stick your Kia in the ignition. And drive off happy. That was a shit ad, Kia. Who wrote that nonsense? Who wrote that garbage? I mean, if you want to pay me, I'll read it. So, put your Kia in the ignition. Um, I guess they're like a karate car company. I don't know. Kia! Anyways, they're the ones with the hamsters, I'm pretty sure. So, anyways, (laughs) that was terrible. That's why I normally write the ads down. (laughs) Oh, well. So, getting into things. Obviously, the AFC North has changed significantly. So, we got the Ravens in first place. And we're going into the season with Lamar Jackson, his first ever full, full-time full starting, you know, starting a full season. Brand new offense, according to Greg Roman and the rest of the team. You know, we don't know for sure. We haven't seen it. But it's going to be different. It's going to be made for Lamar. We're doing run, uh, read options, RPOs, all that fun stuff. Run heavy, big shots downfield. That's the feeling I'm getting. That's the vibe I'm feeling. And I'm excited to see if they get it done. And we are in first place. We got the division last year after that crazy win against the Browns, one of the most exciting games of the year. Not just for how it ended, but what it meant. We got the up-and-coming team in the north, the Browns, which I'll get to next, taking on the the Ravens trying to get that victory, trying to hand, uh, trying to stag off the Steelers. Stag off. Trying to... <laughs> anyways, trying to push back the Steelers from, getting, from them getting into the playoffs because they failed at the end of the year. They really did themselves dirty. They fucked themselves up. And the Ravens came in, swooped, and grabbed that division. Woo! Let's go. The Jon Snow of the NFL. I don't want to be king! Oh, God. And that was another shitty accent. I I gotta stop. So, the up-and-coming threat. The one everyone's talking about. The one and only color. The Browns. What happens when you bring in all these different colors and put them into one? You get brown. And that's what they decided to do. They got Odell Beckham. They got... Who shit? I don't even know. Who who else did they get? They got uh, Jarvis Landry. He was there last year. I should really know this. Either way, I can't open up my goddamn app. There we go. They got Baker Mayfield returning. 
one of the best rookie quarterbacks in a long time. I was a huge fan of his coming out, and I thought he was gonna. I thought he was gonna do really well, and he ended up doing really well. I'm happy for him. I like his style. His swag's a little bit too much, but that's that's what the Browns needed. They needed a no holds bar. You know, pull him up by the bootstraps, douchebag. Either way, he's got some feist in him. I like his game. I, I, I just love his style. His back and forth with Colin Cowherd really just makes Cowherd look like an idiot. But that's what Cowherd does. He looks like an idiot to get ratings. And you know what? And it works for him. Good, good for you, bro. Fucking Colin. I, I hate Colin Cowherd. He, he has some of the worst takes. And then from week to week, he says like the complete opposite. He changes his opinion one week to the next. I mean, that's what we all do. But, bro, if you're going to have an opinion, opinionated base show and you're just going to change your opinion, why would I care to think about anything you have to say if you're just going to change it? I mean, I change my opinions all the time, but I'm not a huge program. I'm just literally a Ravens fan speaking his mind about the Ravens. Just, just you know, recording me talking about the Ravens because where I live, there's not enough Ravens fans where I'm at, and I need to get this stuff off my chest. I need to talk about it with somebody. You know, watching uh, Ravens YouTube and listening to football podcasts, it just ain't enough. I have to splurge. I have to vomit out my ideas so I can feel better. It never works. I'm always like, damn, that was a shit episode. But you know what? I'm going to put it out. Can't see my face. No judgment here. Anyways. So... Like I said, they they brought in Odell. They have <clears throat> they got Baker coming back. They signed Kareem Hunt. Everyone forgets. Uh, you know, I don't I don't think I don't know when he can is available. I think it's after like eight weeks or something like that. You, you know, you kick a girl in the butt, you get eight weeks. I don't know if you've seen the video. Violence against women is not okay, but but his was kind of funny. It was obviously very violent and not cool, or not that violent. He, like, she was, like, in the fetal position because she couldn't handle what was going on. Obviously, the situation was very tense for her, and she, and Kareem Hunt kicked her in the butt, and she fell over. I thought it was funny. Violence against women is not funny, but violence in general is hilarious to me. I don't care who it's against. I don't pick sides. I'm a feminist. Um, (laughs) uh, They also brought in... Uh, Defensive tackle Sheldon Richardson. I think that was part of the Odell trade, or maybe it was a separate time. You know, I'm not really too sure. But he is a very good defensive lineman, and they got they got a lot of good talent on the defense. You know, very good high end talent, but not a lot of depth. So they are very susceptible to injury. Oh, look at this! I forgot they signed Carl Davis. He was cool. I mean, he didn't really do much for us. I didn't really like when we drafted him because I don't I don't like when the Ravens draft Iowa guys in general just because when you watch their tape it's like watching the Steelers play and you're tr- it's like you're watching a Steeler have success and I'm honestly not a huge fan of that. Really, they also got this guy named Eric Kush. Smoke up, Johnny. Smoke some doobies, Kush. Um yeah, so they got rid of Jabril Peppers. I'm kind of happy about that. You know, he's not the best safety, but he is a fucking missile that'll take out anybody on our team. I, I, I was so glad that when, whenever Lamar was running outside, he didn't get smacked by Jabril because he is a missile, a fucking missile, man. I, I don't like a sidewinder missile or more like a, an H bomb, an A bomb. Any of the big ones. He's the fucking Nagasaki because he hits hard. Um, Yeah, they still got, man, I I really do like the Browns team in general. There's a reason they are getting so much hype. But, like I said, the AFC North has changed so much. And I do believe the Ravens will, will contend and defend their title and be on top. But I think the Browns will be right there. And I think they might even be good enough to get in the playoffs as at second place in the AFC North. You know, I, I have I struggle to put them that high because they've never done it before. And now that they got the hype, no one's overlooking them. I know you're, the teams, they, just say, they always say, you never overlook an opponent. You can't do that. Not in the NFL. But 
eh, they're, they're people. And everyone, I mean, what, 1 in 32? Or 1 in 31? It, well, was that their record before this past year? Yeah, wow. So they did have a comeback year, but now it's basically playoff or bust for them. <laughs> They've screwed themselves. Like, they had enough success last year. So the Browns thought, okay, now we can just get all the hype in the world and we're going to do it. Now, I do believe they're going to have some success. But it was the wrong idea to start giving the Browns all this hype. They they are really screwing themselves over right now. Especially, they finally had some sex, success for the first time. So what do they do? They fire their coach. Hey, we had we did great, guys. Let's get rid of this guy. <laughs> like maybe maybe Greg Williams wasn't a great head coach, but you know what? They had success, and then they decided to fire him. What? You're dumb. You're dumb. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, so they do have a lot of good good players on paper, but football is not played on paper. It's played on the field. And they got a lot of high ego guys. And uh, John Dorsey, I believe, is, is John Dorsey their GM? I believe he is. But he came over from Kansas City, and his whole calling card was taking these high risk players with, with issues, with uh, like not mental issues, but they were risky prospects. You know, Kareem Hunt, I mean, obviously you saw what happened with that, and then he brought him back. Tyreek Hill, one of the best. Uh, he should have been on the cover of Madden, honestly. I thought he was he's what made I mean Mahomes was great, don't get me wrong, but that Tyreek Hill, dude, I forget who they were playing last year. But he took the the Hail Mary pass and it was short of the end zone and he runs it in somehow. All I think it might have been against the Cowboys. The Cowboys had everybody down at the goal line and they still couldn't stop him. The cheetah Man, he's too fast, too quick, and he loves assaulting his little child. According, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's out there, so sorry. So, yeah, so John Dorsey, he likes to bring in these high ego guys or sketchy prospects where it's it, one thing can go wrong you don't know i've seen odell too many times you know freaking out on the sideline we all have we've all seen him going a little bit too far like bro get over yourself you're not that cool get a haircut get that earring out you look like a i don't know like a michael jackson wannabe like a ah, like michael jackson's football playing brother fucking he he but Odell, yeah, I can't, I can't wait for the day when the Browns are down by like 20 and everything starts freaking out. I can see them coming out, winning two games. Let me, let me look at their schedule. Let me look at the Cleveland Browns schedule. Cleveland. Cleveland. Browns schedule. Hmm. Okay, so they got the Redskins first week. I think they could win. They got the Colts. Oh, no, it's, this is preseason. Let me get to the regular season. Yubbish. So they start off against the Titans. The Titans are... They, were they in the playoffs last year? I know they were in the year before that. They're always in the mix. They are a good fucking team. But the Browns are also a good team. That To me, that game's a toss-up. And because fuck the Browns, I'm going to give it to the Titans. You know... Lose the last second one. And um, we got the Browns versus the Jets. I think the Jets are going to be underrated too. I really, I really do like the Jets, um, their their defense, what they've been doing this offseason. They stole Mosley from us. But I'm going to give the Browns that one just because I think their, their offense is better than the Jets' offense, and I think their defenses are pretty, pretty comparable. Jets got a lot of, uh, they got a good defense building. They should have like a top, I'm going to say a top seven, top eight, a top 32 defense. No, they're going to have, I think like a top 10 defense for sure. Oh, and then they got the Rams. I think the Rams are going to beat them. So listen, and then the Ravens are going to beat them. So they're starting off with one win I got here. And they're going to start off one and three. Listen, if they have 
any sort of bad stretch of games, all of a sudden you're going to hear reports of, oh, what the hell, the coaching staff doing this? Because it is a new coaching staff, and they have all of these great, talented players. So if they don't produce, they're going to they're, the players are going to blame the coaches, and the coaches are going to be like, well, well what are you going to do? This is not me. But, I mean, we, we haven't seen see them play together. And you can say that really about any team, but with these high-profile guys that all want the ball, I think some players are going to get upset. They can say all they want, but that's, that's just the nature. Jealousy is a part of the human condition. And I think the Browns, if they start off bad, they might brown their pants. They might brown their pants. Get a new color, Browns. Fucking Cleveland Greens. <laughs> Even that sounds better. The Cleveland Blues. Yeah, the Browns. Ugh. Is there is there a reason? Is there a reason the Browns are even called the Browns? This is Craven's and Raven podcast, but god damn it, I gotta know this. Why are the Browns called the Browns? Yeah, it's right. <laughs> People ask this question. I'm not the only one. The name of the team was at first left up to Brown. We rejected calls for it to be... What? Is... What? Yeah. Okay, so... The name of the team was at first left up to Brown. I'm guessing Brown's a guy who rejected calls for it to be christened the Browns. McBride then held a contest to name the team in may 1945 cleveland panthers was the most popular choice but brown rejected it because it was the name of an earlier failed football team Uh, god damn it google you gave me the wrong excerpt okay whatever screw you browns i'm guessing some guy just named it after himself still shitty color at least at least the redskins are just racist I mean, you could, like, do something like that. Just, (laughs) I don't know how that helps. I'm not going to bag on the Redskins because they suck. D.C. needs it. Go talk to your congressman. They need some help. Don't vote. Um, Don't uh, don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is why I should probably write down what I'm going to talk about because now I'm just, like, looking at the Internet and shouting out words. Anyways, so the Browns, I think they will get second place in this division. I I really do like their offense, but they are destined to collapse at some point during the season, thus causing them not to win the AFC North, where they're going to lose three games in a row, they're going to go on a skid, and everyone's going to be pissed off. So I think third place, I have the Steelers. Now the Steelers, whoa, buddy, the Ravens' great rival. Steel City, the steel skirting, the Schittsburg Peelers, the Schittsburg Squealers. Anyways, they, 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 uh, they're the Steelers. They're a storied franchise. They have, or they're tied for the most uh, Super Bowls in the modern Super Bowl era. They do have six, but I wasn't alive for most of them, so... I don't like to count them. Like any Steelers fan, when they're like, oh, six, baby, six. Uh, Did you see all of them? At least people my age is like, oh, how how many did you see? You saw one, right? Yeah, shut up. Shut your mouth. Where'd they get two? It doesn't matter. The Schittsburg Squealers, uh, they fucking, the killer bees are gone. Save the bees, man. They uh, they gotta save the bees because, hey, Pittsburgh is out of bees. All they got is Ben Rapeless Burgers. And and he's the worst out of all of them. I mean, he is a pretty good quarterback. He's very tough to bring down. He frustrates the fuck out of me. Anytime we'd play him and they'd be wrapped up around him, he'd still get the pass off. But thank God they don't have Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell anymore. Thank fucking God. God, if you're real, thank you for answering my prayers. Thank you for breaking up the killer bees. Doing weird accents. I don't know why. Something must... I don't know what's going on. I, I got... I ate some Chinese food earlier. Maybe it got me all, like, festive. Even though I, I don't really know how to do a Chinese accent. Oh, That's all I know how to do. Oh, But that just sounds racist. 
because you have to make the face when you do it. <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, the Steelers. Oh, man. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell, now since he's not on the Steelers, I can say I really love his running style because it just pisses me off. Uh, he is so goddamn patient where he's just like hopping around in the backfield for three seconds, like a solid one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Yeah, that is so fucking long on a play. Plays aren't supposed to last that long when it's a running play unless he's running down the field. But he would there, wait, sit, sit patiently, hop around, and wait for one of our guys to shoot shoot a gap, thus opening up another gap. It happened every goddamn time. Thank God he's not there. I mean, the Steelers, they still have a great offensive lineman, great offensive line in general, so they're still going to have a good rushing attack, but I don't think it's going to be as good as it was with, I mean, it was pretty decent last year without uh, Le'Veon Bell, but I'm just, I'm just glad he's not there anymore. Go work on your rap album and head up to New York. Where are your Timberlands? Isn't that like a New York thing? I don't know. Ride this, ride the subway and play some football up at the Jets. I do believe we play the Jets, so it's going to suck to see him again. But the Jets don't have as good of an offensive line. So when he tries to be patient up in New York, he's going to get smothered. And yeah, like I said before, A.B., whew, thank God. Because, man, he the most toe-draggiest, swaggiest of wide receivers I've ever seen. He is so in tune. He, he wasn't the fastest, but he's very quick. And he knows how to turn around a cornerback. Man, like, he, he ran like a 4-5 at the combine, I believe. And that shit always annoys me. Like, oh, he's only 4-5. He's not that fast. The difference between a 4-5 and a 4-2 is, like, when they're running down, that's like a foot difference. Like, literally, like, if you measure it out, like, when they, the time that they cross, that's like a foot. A foot in difference. Now, it's different. They can get up to higher top-end speeds, but everyone's fast. And what he does and why technique is so important is because what you lack for in, in, a, in a step with speed, you can make up way more with your skill. Like, if you cut just right, you can get instant five-yard separation. Instant. The speed doesn't do that. It's just having the ability to know when to turn your opponent. And thank God, Antonio Brown ain't there no more. No more. I mean, he never had, I mean, he has had huge games against us, but uh, on average, he didn't have the biggest games because we would always double and triple team him, thus leaving everyone else open. So I'm glad he's gone. Uh, you know, they just had one of the most like tumultuous, you know, lay down some mulch, plant some flowers, because their off season was crazy. They need to grow some respect. Um, spring is here. Or, Anyways, I'm going to stop with the analogy. Yeah, the, the Steelers there just have always been a good franchise. I will never count them out. I, I understand they don't have that high-end talent that they used to, but I really like their first-round draft pick in Devin Bush. They desperately needed to replace Ryan Shazier after he gone did and paralyzed himself for a little bit. And I think I think they got their guy. I really like Devin Bush coming out. You know, it, it was kind of the right player, wrong price, because they did move up a lot to get him. But, hey, last time they moved up that much, they got Troy Polamalu. Last time they moved up 10 spots or into the 10 spot, because I'm pretty sure last time they moved up um, in the first round to the number 10 spot, they grabbed Polamalu. You saw how that turned out. And I really do like uh, Devin Bush's instinct, speed, his ability to get off blocks, sideline to sideline, just a great inside linebacker that can kind of shore up their defense, you know, get behind that good, def that always good defensive Steelers uh, <clears throat> defensive line. He's going to run around and make plays. But the good thing is the Ravens can still pass on him. I think anybody can pass on him, even Ryan Tannehill, you know. <sighs> so... That leaves me to the last place, Shin Blincinati Bungles. The Tua Tunga Vialo's Bengals. Uh, nah, that didn't work. 
Anyways, the fucking Cincinnati Bengals. They are perceived as the trash of the AFC North right now. They have they have switched spots with the Browns. You know, I uh, I'm they got rid of Marvin Lewis, so they got a first year head coach, and they still have Andy Dunn throw the ball, Dalton. Andy Dalton's always been average to me. He's always been right there with Joe Flacco, just an average guy who's a game manager with a stupid voice that if you listen to a motivational speech, I remember when they had hard knocks, man, he was hard to listen to. Come on, guys, let's go out there and let's do this. Let's do this. Shut the fuck up, bro. You know, and they lost... uh, not Geno Atkins. Uh, who's their fucking... Perfect. They lost Vontez Perfect. A very good, very, very good linebacker. Obviously, he was getting older, so he's not as good as he used to be. But a very good, controversial linebacker. He would get fined damn near every every game. And you can see why. Because he put up huge hits when he's not supposed to. Doing a little extracurricular. But you know what? He was a good good player and i think their defense their defense is what's going to kill them here i i do like their offense i really like what what i they always do on offense and i think with the new head coach i'm pretty sure he is an offensive coordinator so he is going to have new ideas and they're finally going to get rid of the mediocre marvin lewis you know maybe when they get to the playoffs they'll win a game and then lose one maybe they'll win at least one though Maybe they will. I just don't think it's this year. I think they just have too many questions on defense. I mean, I don't know too much about their defense other than, like, Geno Atkins and uh, Jesse Bates. Those are, like, the only two names I know. Oh, and then uh, who's their corner? Pac-Man. But he's getting older. You know, their defense is just older, and they need some new new, uh, some new stuff. New, need some new peeps in there. But, yeah, their offense, they still have A.J. Green. They still have Tyler Boyd, both of which Ravens fucking killers. I'm a huge fan of Joe Mixon. Um, Not when he's playing against us, but I just really like his running style, how ferocious he is. They don't have the best offensive line, and it seems like Joe Mixon does everything when he's running. Like he, He damn near has to juke 10 guys to get 10 yards. So, good on him. He's a very good running back. Um, and they they make me nervous. Like in a, I think they're going to be the worst in the division, you know, four out of fourth place. But I still think we're going to split with them. And both games are going to be tight, and they're going to end up, the one they win, it's going to be another one of those fourth quarter miracle, fuck you, A.J. Green, or fuck you, Tyler Boyd, another one of those games. Because that's how it goes down every fucking year. The Bengals come out creeping at the end of the year, coming out of the jungle stock. They've been stalking us all year. We got the win on them. We got the jump on them. But then they get the jump on us. They've been waiting in the bushes trying to hunt down. What do tigers eat? What do they hunt down? Like birds? They're in the jungles. I don't don't know what tigers eat. Do they just eat people? Do tigers just eat people? And why are they orange? They can't camouflage with anything. They live in the in the goddamn rainforest. Nothing is orange in the rainforest. Anyways, fucking Bengals. What are you doing? Get a new mascot. Ugh. Ugh. Well, I never. Anyways, yeah. And yeah, the Bengals. Yeah, they're gonna. Fuck. I think we're gonna split with each with each opponent. I think we are gonna end up going three and three, in the division. It is what it is. I mean, I think we are going to be pretty good outside the the division. But I just think, man, it's just one of those things where the Ravens just like to play it close with the the division games every single time. It doesn't no it doesn't matter how good or how bad any of the teams will be. So there's that. It blows. I'm actually going to take a look at. Uh, some of the drafts. <sighs> Remind myself of what each team did. Let me go back to the Browns. Browns draft. Who we got? Who we got? Yeah, who we got? Who we got? Yeah. 
What they do, what they do, what they do. Oh shit, that's right. In the second round, they got Greedy Williams. God damn, that was a greedy fucking pick. I really like that. You know, I think Greedy is a good corner, good press man corner. I thought he would have fit the Ravens well. Obviously, we have enough corners and we're pretty, we're pretty stout at that position. But he is a very good lockdown corner. But he doesn't like to tackle, so the Ravens probably never would have drafted him. And that's probably why he fell to the second round. And I guess he had attitude issues. He's kind of a cunt. Uh, so, and then in round three, they grab Sion Taki Taki. Watch out for linebacker Sion Taki Taki. Don't get drunk on Saki Saki. You got to watch out for the Taki Taki. Talk to you later. I, I never watched his tape. I don't really know. Man, they, And then in the fourth round, they got Sheldrick Redwine, another great player. This brown goes great with a red wine. Uh, oh, and then they got... Oh, man, they... That was a reach. So, Sion Takitaki and Sheldrick Redwine was a reach. Then the fifth round, they got Mac Wilson, the uh, the Alabama inside linebacker. But he's not as good as any of the other Alabama linebackers who have come out. Uh, uh, not even close. He is just kind of average. When, when you have all of these good defensive players around you, you would expect everyone to shine a little bit more. You know, to everyone have an easier time on the field. But Mac Wilson never really had that. Uh, so he fell to the fifth round. I don't think he would have fell. He should have fallen that far. But, you know, people were talking about him in the first round. They ended up getting him in the fifth, and it's a pretty good deal. So Greedy in the second and Mac in, and uh, Mac in the fifth, those are very good, very good picks. And then some of these other ones, they got a kicker in the fifth round. Ha! <laughs> All right, Browns, your draft is ass. They, they drafted ass. I could see Greedy Williams being a bust. And I don't see any of these players being any sort of contributors. I think maybe they were just going for depth because I think most of their positions are pretty set. But, you know, you do need high-end depth. You can't just grab dudes and expect them like, oh, well, they're going to be backups anyways. No, no, no. You need guys who would be starters to be your backups. And then that way when someone gets injured and your team falls apart, Browns, they – uh they step in right away, and then there's no issue. They got tackled Drew Forbes. Look, I made it to Forbes. Mama, I made it to Forbes. And if you know that song, it's a great song. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't know anything about their players. I, I've, besides Greedy and Mac Wilson, those are the only players that I know that they picked. Donnie Lewis Jr. Yo, Donnie. Yo, Donnie Lewis Jr. Anyways, yeah, their pick is ass. I don't think they got any better or worse. I think, you know, I think with their with their draft uh, minus their their uh, losses minus the fact that they got a new coach, but plus you know the more experience for Baker Mayfield, I think they're gonna stay right where they are. I think they're gonna do better because maybe they would have had more games if Baker started all year. So I could see them finishing nine and seven, ten and six, like no problem. I just think the Ravens are going to finish twelve and four. I do drink the purple Kool Aid. I'm not ashamed or afraid to say that. This is, I'm a Ravens fan, and God damn it, maybe they'll go sixteen and zero. Who gives a fuck? I can say what I want. God, shut up. Anyways, I, yeah, I do think. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of their draft. Let me look up uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh. Two T's. Okay, that's Pittsburgh Steelers. Don't you know? Don't you know the Pittsburgh Steelers draft? Come on, buddy. Typing like a goddamn idiot. Um, let's see. No, I don't want images. Oh God, you Google. You Google, son of a bitch. So, if this wants to load, any day now, buddy, feel free. All right. Yeah, so like I said, yeah, Devin Bush in round one. I love the pick. I think wrong price, maybe, but they they had a ton of picks, and they ended up recoup, recouping them because they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They have five, six. Yeah, so they brought in nine people. That was very good. And then in the so they didn't have a second round pick, but in the third round they brought in a wide receiver Deontay Johnson. 
You know, I thought he was very good. I didn't think he was going to go in round three. He has the speed and tools to do it and the explosiveness. It's just, you know, he went to a small school. But, hey, if the Steelers get a wide receiver, you know, they're probably really good, and you better watch out. I think everyone's probably going to be wrong about this kid because uh, – it's the Steelers, and they know their wide receivers, apparently. I think they are one of the only, I mean, I can't really think of anybody else, but, like, the only team to have consistent consistent success when drafting wide receivers. No other team no other team does, just because there's so many of them. They come in all shapes and sizes, and you got to get the right player and the right fit, and it's got to be perfect, and Steelers just know how to do that somehow. And then also in the third round, they got a, Defensive back Justin Lane, you know, at the time he was a he was a great pick, great value pick because he he was seen as like a maybe end of the first second round guy, and they got him in the third. He was definitely the best cornerback on the board at that time. Uh, very good press guy, so maybe they'll do a little bit more press or man to man. They do a lot of zone. I mean, they should just they should have just drafted corners this whole this whole draft because that's what they need. Uh, they got running back. Uh, Benny Snell Jr. in the fourth, uh, running, bruising kind of every down back out of Kentucky. You know, I think he's pretty good. People had him higher than I did. I just thought he was, you know, a good running back. But, you know, get a good offensive line, which they do, and you could make anybody look good, let's be honest. Uh, They got tight end Zach Gentry in the fifth round. I didn't look at the tight ends this year, but he's from Michigan. He's probably pretty good, uh, pretty decent. That guy, Vance McDonald, that they had, he was a beast. That uh, one stiff arm they had, but fuck the Steelers. Uh, They got linebacker Sutton Smith in the sixth round. Um, White guy, linebacker. I don't know. I don't know anything about him. In the sixth round, not a bad pick. Isaiah Bugs. I liked him as a late-round guy, and he ended up going to the sixth, falling all the way to the sixth round. So that is a great value. Anytime you can get an Alabama player late in the draft, you're probably doing something right, unless it's like a kicker or some nonsense. You can't draft the water boy in the sixth round. But if you're playing at Alabama, you're probably one of the best players in the country, even if you're not like the leader on the team. It's just that's how good Alabama is. And then they got Ulysses Gilbert the third. What a fucking name in the sixth round. <clears throat> I never watched his tape, but I did see the name because he was p- part of my uh, name Hall of Fame, uh, best names of the draft guys. He was definitely up there, so that's cool. And then in the seventh round, they grab offensive lineman Derwin Gray out of Maryland. Look at that! Ooh, he's probably not that good. He went to Maryland. I mean, he looks like a big boy though. So I mean, overall, uh, I really love the Devin Bush. Really love the Devin Bush pick. I I think the Steelers had a pretty good draft. Anytime you can bring in nine players, you're going to affect your team. You're going to have competition. You're going to have a lot of guys entering the locker room to kind of push everyone else. So I, I really do like the Steelers draft. So let me go. Go ahead and look at the Bengals. Bengals draft. Let's see who they picked up. I, I I totally forget who they even who they drafted like at all. I have no idea. Um. Oh, they got Jonah Williams. Okay. Now, yeah, they needed to fix their offensive line, and I mean, they got, in my opinion, the best tackle in the draft. You know, very consistent, went to Alabama, got that pedigree, went up against the best competition you could ask for, and had good tape against everyone, except for Cleveland Farrell. But they really needed to shore up their line. I mean, they needed more help than just Jonah Williams, but they're doing going in the right direction. You know, help out Joe Mixon, help out Andy Dalton. help The uh, good O-line helps out everybody. So I like that pick. Uh, they also went ahead and grabbed Drew Sample, tight end, Washington. Uh, like I said, I didn't do much much uh, work on the tight ends, but uh, he went to Washington, so probably like a pass-catching guy. Uh, oh, it looks like he's more of a more of a blocking guy. So it looks like they're uh, they're going for the run game. They're really they're really doing it, huh? Really, uh, really doing it. 
And then they got uh, outside linebacker Jermaine Pratt from NC State. I really liked his game. Very, very uh, big, physical, physically looking, imposing linebacker in the back end. You know, he could fill in for Vontez Perfect. I mean, Vontez Perfect is was one of the best linebackers at one point. I don't think he'll ever be that. But he's very fast, hits strong. He just uh, got hung up on blocks a little bit more than I would have liked to see when I was watching his tape. But a good player if you're talking third round. Uh, Ryan Finley in the fourth. A dumb pick. You're dumb. Uh, Rennell Wren. I don't know who you are. He went to Ohio State? Is that what? Oh, Arizona State? Yeah. Meh. Who cares? Yeah, Michael Jordan, center guard. I think that was a pretty good pick in the fourth. Not too scabby. Uh, I, uh, I'm a fan of that. They just need offensive line help. So, so far, it's a mad draft. Travion Williams, okay, that's a good pick. I really like Travion Williams. Yeah, he had he had the, uh, I think, the most 10-plus yard runs, or it might have been 15-plus yard runs in the SEC, and it was like 20 more than the second-place guy, who was Benny Snell, who everyone had way higher. But Travion Williams, he's fast, quick, just a vicious, great runner with a lot of production. Just a great running back, someone who probably shouldn't have gone in the sixth fucking round. He could have gone in the fourth. I think he's going to have some success, especially because I, you know, they're getting that run game going. You, they can spell Joe Mixon. I don't know. Do they still have Giovanni Bernard? Do they still have the other guy? I don't know. But he will be a decent backup for you. Uh, Deshaun Davis, linebacker Auburn. I don't really know nothing about him. Sixth round Auburn guy. But, you know, Auburn guy, SEC, you know, going to gonna do pretty good. I, I, so far, I think the Bengals seem to have gotten value. And in the sixth round, they go ahead and grab another running back, Rodney Anderson. I forgot. They totally did draft him. Going So now they got two Oklahoma running backs. One beats his girl, and one one gets injured. This So they... Yeah, Rodney Anderson would have been one of the top running backs in this draft if not for his injuries, and that says it all. Best of, best ability is availability. That's what they say, but that's why he went into the sixth round, and, you know, if it works out, and that, it works for them. They got Jordan They got uh, Jordan Brown in the seventh, cornerback South Dakota State. Who fucking cares? Their draft is all right. The draft is all right. So, obviously, the Ravens had the best draft you know, I'm not a homer or nothing, but I uh, I think the Ravens did have the best draft. I'm going to say the Steelers had the second best, then the Bengals had the third best, and the Browns had the fourth worst best. Either way, it's not not the best. They just didn't get a lot of players. Anytime you can bring in uh, more than seven players, in my opinion, that's good for your team. It doesn't even matter if you're just going based sheer on the numbers because it puts everyone on notice. You know, you can... Try to try to get someone at each level of the game on both sides of the ball. You know, so put put everyone else on notice, and competition makes makes the best out of everybody. It gets everybody going. So just looking around the AFC North, a lot of change, a lot of moving going on. Um, it'll be interesting to see how things shake out. We got two first-time head coaches coming in. Uh, we got. The, the vacancies of the Killer Bees, and we got the Ravens losing so many of their top players, franchise guys, Ring of Honor guys, you know? Uh, like three, you're talking like Joe Flacco, Terrell Suggs, C.J. Mosley, all gone. You know, pillars of that team for, at least with C.J. Mosley, the past four years, past four years, and then with Terrell Suggs, Joe Flacco, past ten years and beyond. So really just Ravens classics gone off the team. But the Ravens do have the ability to de- to replace guys on offense, and I think the team was better with Lamar Jackson at the helm. That's why they made the switch, and that's why when Joe Fleck was healthy, they stayed with Lamar. That's what I wanted them to do, and I'm glad they did it. Normally they don't listen to me when I'm yelling at the screen, but maybe now since I got the podcast, maybe they'll listen more. This is the first year I'm doing it, so I can't wait for the season to actually start. I'm tired of all this speculation, opinions, bullshit. I want some real stuff on the field so I can do my opinions, speculation, bullshit then when there's actually football. And I can 
you know, place bets and say this is going to happen and then it not happen and never yell at me. But either way, I am excited to get this year going. All of the AFC North, North teams make me nervous, but we're still going to come out on top. We're going to defend the wall. Hodor! Hodor! Anyways, I think I think that's going to do it for this episode. So if you like the podcast, you know, like it, comment on it, share it. If you're listening on YouTube, it's also on other uh, podcast platforms, you know, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher. Um, I feel like I'm missing one. SoundCloud. So a lot of the good ones, you know, if you're listening on YouTube and you want to Put it in your pocket, listen to some good Ravens content. You can do that on the other uh, stuff. So subscribe, you know, leave a rating. Everything helps, really. You don't have to, but it'd be, it'd be a lot cooler if you did. Um, yeah, that's going to do it. I'm going to leave you guys with a... Go Ravens? Can I get a... Go Ravens? I don't know what that was. I literally just covered my mouth and said, Go Ravens. Go Ravens!